everyone today we are going to start our second chapter that is feelings and senses so we all have feelings we all have same sense organs but we have different feelings we have different emotions we our likes and dislikes everything is different from each other so how does this work how these all these things are different when we go from people to people if we ask people they have different likes different dislikes they have different emotions their feelings are different so what are the things that determine these factors so these things feelings emotions likes and dislikes all are determined by our exposure by our experiences and are the and the environment we are exposed to so these are the main three factors that determine our feelings emotions likes and dislikes now let us understand likes and dislikes whatever we like and whatever we dislike they are depend on various factors like our family our traditions occupations our mood and many more things so let us understand this one by one first is family for example a child belongs to a family of musicians so he must be much interested towards music that means he is having influence of the family due to which he is interested towards music in other case a family of fishermen in that family the members are used to the smell of fish because they are exposed to that smell from their childhood hence they might not feel the difference of smell or they can easily tolerate the smell of fish but in other case other people's mind not like the smell of fish now next is traditions as we indians have so many traditions in all over the india so this also has a great impact on our likes and dislikes for example vegetarian people they may not like the smell of fish or meat but on the other hand the non vegetarian may feel it very aromatic so traditions are influencing the likes and dislikes gujaratis the people living in gujarat called as gujaratis they love curry leaves so they used to put uh, curry leaves in every dishes but some people may not like this now some people find it more uh, tasty when they add garlic and onion to their dishes on the other hand some people whose traditions are such that they do not use onion and garlic so uh, they might feel its smell as pungent now next is occupation occupation for example if a person is working in a hospital so he is used to the smell of medicines but other people who are not used to the smell of medicines like they are not working in a hospital they might be working in some corporate sector so they are not used to the smell of medicine so they don't like it now next is mood for this we can take an example like we are going for a party in party we might we may enjoy loud music right we party in party we usually have loud music so we enjoy it there but if we feel sick and we are not feeling good so this loud music becomes unbearable to us so this is how mood influences our likes and dislikes as we have understood that our feelings emotions and 
our likes and dislikes are influenced by the exposure experiences and the environment but you might be thinking how so let us understand this how by our topic sensing things we all have our five sense organs all are same in every person they function their function is also same in every person but it is our brain yes it is our brain that senses the things differently because every person's brain works differently so it makes the difference in sensing the things differently now let us understand how this thing works so it is our sense organ that receives the signal then the sensory nerve it gives the message to the brain then the motor brain reads the message then motor nerves takes the message which the brain needs to take the action and then the body part acts like that now let us take an example to understand this suppose we are touching a hot metal like a hot saucepan by our finger so when we touch the hot hot saucepan with our finger the finger that means the skin is the sense organ so it will sense the hotness of the saucepan and it will send a message to our brain through sensory nerve now brain read will read this message as it is hot and then it will send a message to remove our hand from the saucepan so this message will be carried by the motor nerves and as soon as the motor nerve gives our hand the signal we will remove our finger from the saucepan that means our uh, body part that is our hand has come into action so this is the process by which our brain acts and gives and receives the messages now let us understand the baby a baby also senses hunger and discomfort yes it also senses hunger and discomfort but because it cannot speak so how does it communicate it communicates through crying yes a baby cries to communicate its feelings and a person who takes care of the baby who looks after it usually understands why the baby is crying boy is is he uh, is the baby uh, hungry or is he feeling any discomfort